Hi everyone, I'm Alicia Krause here again at the PragerU HQ with another PragerU Facebook Live just for our awesome fans and uh, listeners. Today I'm really excited to welcome Jake Olson. He's a USC student athlete and a new presenter of this week's video on school choice. That video is Why Special Needs Students Want School Choice. Jake, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it, and thank you for making time to do the video. I know some pe some people follow you uh, or follow us on Instagram, and they saw the behind-the-scenes videos and photos, and you had to completely memorize your script. That was really impressive. Well, you know, it, it comes a lot easier when you're passionate about the subject, so... And, and we, it was a really great video, so if people haven't seen it, they should check it out on our Facebook page right now, or after this interview, more appropriately. Or it's still on the homepage at PragerU.com as it came out on Monday. So you mentioned in the video that the, some of the public schools that you had access to growing up in Orange County are some of the best public schools in the country. So did you look into attending one of those public schools before you decided to go private? Yeah, we did. Um, we looked. I, I uh, both public high schools in uh, Huntington Beach, Huntington High, and, and uh, Edison, were, they're, both, they're both very good schools. However, um, after doing the assessment, the IEP, you know, I was a high performing student in my middle school and you know, I wanted to eventually take, you know, honors and AP courses. And they straight up told us, you know, that there was, you know, they didn't have personnel within the schools that were able to teach me, you know, upper division calculus or yeah. an upper division um, chemistry, whatever the courses were. And so, by that, you know, we started exploring the private schools, and, and if sure enough, you know, um, Orange Lutheran was was totally willing to uh, challenge me as, as far as I wanted to go um, academically in their school. And did you feel more academically challenged, and like your needs were met at, at a private school versus the public school? Oh yeah, yeah, it was it, it was a world difference. You know, I took uh, AP Stats, um, I took you know honors honors uh, math. Mm -hmm. and an AP bio, took honors molecular genetics. You know, I finished with a four four in high school. So definitely, um, you know, with all, with all the help and just the, the support that they gave me, you know, I was willing to challenge myself and take courses that I never thought I would. So you wanted to be a football player from the time that you were about twelve years old, which is when you lost um, your second eye due to you know this retinal issue that you were born with. So when your eyesight was gone, how did you then train to become such a good enough football player that you are now a USC Trojan football player. Well, you know, I, I love playing football when I was young and I always grew up a USC Trojan fan. Mm -hmm. And when, you know, I went blind, um, I was, I was playing flag football just from my middle school and it was, it, you know, it was nothing too serious. Um, so I actually continued to play center for my flag football team, my eighth grade year, even without sight. But again, you know, it was, it wasn't anything serious. And when I went to high school, I actually didn't play football just because, uh, I went to Orange Lutheran. We were, we we're in a pretty tough division, um, and you know, it was tackle football. Uh, it, it was a lot more serious. I didn't think there was really a position out there for me to play. Hmm. And after sitting in the stands for two years, I, I had a, I had enough. Um, I wanted to get back on the field and dress on Friday nights and be able to uh, help my team in any way I could. And so I came upon the long snapping position um, and noticed that really um, it was muscle memory, it was feel. Mm -hmm. and, and so the summer going into my junior year, every day I went out with the coach and practiced and, and started mastering the skill of long snapping. And then sure enough, when I came back my junior year, uh, I was the best long snapper on the team and earned a spot in varsity. That's awesome. I've also heard a rumor that you're quite good at golf. So when did you start golfing? Uh, I golfed as a, as a little kid as well. Um, mm -hmm. And actually was was pretty, pretty good. And that was um, something I really wanted to continue as well. You know, there there is a you know blind golf association. You know, it's been uh, blind golf is 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 already a uh, you know a thing out there. So for me, I wanted to continue to play golf. And man, it was it was tough. You know, I went from a twelve year old that's pretty good to to a twelve year old that couldn't make contact. And mm. I started having to really practice and put in a lot of put, put a lot of work in and you know, the patience and the mental toughness that came with that. Um, you know, for any golfer, let alone without sight. Um, so, you know, I started just really practicing and actually played varsity in, in high school as well for golf. And, you know, I, I still love to play golf. And, um, you know, I, I get out there anytime I can. And, you know, um, 
the, the possibilities of playing tournaments later in my life is still open. You know, I, I, I continue to try to work on my skill. Um, and, you know, eventually, you know, to, the, to now I'm, you know, able to shoot, in, you know, in the, in the 70s. And, and so it's, it's, it's awesome to uh, just see the hard work pay off out there. Well, I am okay at mini golf, but shooting in the 70s is better than I would ever do at a real game. And so I'm definitely impressed. But so uh, you mentioned earlier that part of the reason why memorizing the script, you know, wasn't that you didn't view it as work or is that difficult is because this is an issue that you're very passionate about. And for in your video mentions this week that for many special needs students in America, they're stuck in a public school that just can't give them what they need educationally. And you even pointed out the very good public schools that you had access to didn't have the people there that could help you, you know, exceed your educational, you know, potential. So do you have any advice for those students or those parents? Well, you know, I always say um, in life, if, if there's a will, there's a way. And so, you know, for those kids, um, you know, even though they're not in the perfect situation, they have to have a will to, to want to, to uh, excel in school. And so, just advocating for yourself, going up to the teachers, explaining, okay, you know, I'm blind. Yeah, this might not be the easiest thing for me. This might not be uh, the sh mo most straightforward way of doing things, but I can do it. So let's work on finding a way for me to do it. Let's work on, you know, communicating what, you know, what I can and cannot do and how to do it. So that's my advice is to find a way to have that will and you'll find a way to advocate for yourself in those, in those schools. And then on a broader, you know, spectrum, start finding, you know, and, and Prager's done an awesome job here, and you know that's why I'm part of it. Is, is finding a way and having that will to to change legislation so that you know these kids aren't stuck in these schools that you know aren't aren't willing to support them in the way that they they want and challenge them in the way that they need. Hmm. So, do you think that school choice can become a reality in the near future for most special needs students in the country today? I hope so, um, and you know people like you and, and and me and and everyone involved with this project. I know there's a lot a lot of people out there. Um, that once understanding it, especially after seeing my video, you know, they, they come to the kind of their sense and say, you know, that this is really a broken system. Um, you know, these kids aren't benefiting in the way that, that it, we they need to be. And, you know, education is such a, uh, you know, important issue in, in any society, in any country. And, you know, for America, um, it, it, you know, it's especially important just for kids to, to be educated right. And, and, you know, let's not leave the special needs students out of the out of the equation. Uh, I absolutely agree with you there. And just a reminder for everyone that's watching right now, you should join the movement, learn more about the School Choice Movement, and take the pledge. You can do that at schoolchoicenow.com. Jake, thank you so much for being with us. If you haven't checked out this video, once again, you can check it out here on our Facebook page or go to PragerU.com. Jake Olson, student athlete at USC and our latest PragerU presenter of Why Special Needs Students Want School Choice. Thanks so much for being here with us today. Thank you. Have a right good on. one.